So guys, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 has long been billed as the ending of the team's journey, so here is everything explained about the movie's ending and post credit scene. So let's start with the end. We all know High Evolutionary is the Volume 3's big bad, and at the end every big bad had to die, but it happened and what are his purposes in the movie? Let's talk about this. In the Volume 3 the High Evolutionary's goal is to reshape the universe in his image, removing imperfections from every species in the galaxy, through cruel torture and experimentation. And our favorite Rocket Raccoon is one of his former subjects, which leads the confrontation with the Guardians, that ends in the High Evolutionary's defeat. At the end of Volume 3, the Guardians manage to defeat the High Evolutionary. After confronting his forces aboard his spacecraft, the High Evolutionary disappears from the film's final act. He reappears at the climax, cornering Rocket in the holding pens, where the High Evolutionary imprisoned the raccoon earlier in his life. This results in a battle between the Guardians and their foe, with all the members contributing to taking down the villain. Rocket citing his status as a Guardian, refuses to kill the High Evolutionary, leading to his demise when the ship explodes with the antagonist still on board. However he get defeated at the end, but who knows he really dies or not, because it was never really shown. So possibly in future, MCU can bring him back to face off our heroes one more time. In the Volume 3, High Evolutionary is like a mad scientist who wants everyone to be perfect, and because of that he do lots of crazy experiments on his ship. In the climax sequence before the ship's destruction, there are many experimented tortured childrens are on board, so the Guardian's main task is to save them and kill High Evolutionary. The savior of these innocent lives was possible through nowhere, the Guardian's home base, that is rigged as a giant spaceship. Kraglin flies nowhere to the Guardian's location, allowing the High Evolutionary's test subjects to live on nowhere, with Nebula and Drax to raise and protect them. Undoubtedly, the biggest subject of discourse surrounding Volume 3 prior to its release, was the fate of the titular team. From theories, that Rocket, Quill, or Drax, would die in the film. So many fans were speculating over the fate of each individual Guardians member. Thankfully it is safe to say, James Gunn managed to provide satisfying endings for each character, with Volume 3. So let's start with the fate of Gamora. At the end Gamora returns to the Ravagers, because she now calls Ravagers her family, rather than staying with Quill. Despite many expecting a reconciliation between the two, after 2014 Gamora returned in Avengers Endgame, the film portrays the concept of Peter and Gamora's relationship very maturely. Gamora insists she is a different person, as she has not experienced what the old Gamora had, leading Peter to realize he cannot force her to fall in love with him again. Therefore, Gamora returns to the new family she has found in the Ravagers, rather than the Guardians. The next members are Nebula and Drax, because both of their fate now connect to each other. The other characters, I mean other than Gamora who officially retired from the Guardians, were Drax and Nebula. At the end of the film, the duo decides to stay on Nowhere, rebuilding it as a society for the rescued subjects of the High Evolutionary. Nebula's reasoning for this stems from Thanos' abuse of her, with the character insisting on building a better upbringing for the children, than the one she was subject to. Drax has similar reason too, he chooses to help raise the children. After the loss of his daughter before Volume 1, as he was born to be a father rather than a destroyer. But maybe in future, there have to be a twist in Drax's story, because there is a new character in Volume 3 Philavel, who is love interest to Drax's daughter in comics. So maybe, now comes the last Guardian who retire from his job too. By the end the team leader, Star-Lord also feels like to get retired. Because throughout the film, Peter is shown to struggle with the loss of Gamora, as well as the other loved ones, who have died during his life such as his mother and Yondu. At one point in the story, Peter is reminded that he abandoned his grandfather on Earth, which explains his decision to return home at the end of the film. As a result, Quill reunites with his grandfather after over 30 years, and lives with him on Earth for the foreseeable future. So that means close to the end, our Guardian's team is broken at all, because every team member is searching for inner peace elsewhere. Does that mean this is the end of Guardians franchise, possibly not? Because the end of Volume 3 provide us something new and very interesting. In the Volume 3 mid-credits scene, Rocket Raccoon is sitting on a dusty planet, 
and asking his new companions about their favorite music. Which reminds us of Star-Lord. Here Rocket is shown with a group of other characters from the movie, most of them wearing the same new versions of suit that Guardians wore during the film. While they're chatting, it becomes clear they're on the planet for a job, to protect what appear to be Krylorians, indicating they might be on the alien's home planet of Krylor, from a group of beasts. Though Kraglin insists he can take them on by himself, however Rocket wants to make it as fast as he can, so he wakes Groot, and the new team charges forward to attack. As confirmed by the Volume 3 credits scene, the new Guardians of the Galaxy team includes Rocket Raccoon, Groot, Adam Warlock, Kraglin, Phyla, Cosmo the Spacey Dog, and the creature Blurp, which Adam Warlock acquires after killing its original Ravager owner, is also shown with the team, though since he is a pet, it's unlikely he's an official member of the Guardians of the Galaxy. After most of the original Guardians go their separate ways, Star-Lord makes Rocket the new leader of the Cosmic Team. Presumably, he's the one who assembles the new roster of heroes, sticking with his longtime partner Groot, and officially adding Kraglin and Cosmo, who helped the Guardians rebuild nowhere, then saved them from the High Evolutionary's ship. Adam Warlock starts off as an antagonist to the Guardians, but is redeemed after he's saved by Groot, then joins the team, and brings Blurp along with him. The only character whose addition to the new team isn't explained, is Phyla Vell. But don't worry, because we are going to explore Phyla Vell in a separate video, but for that you have to subscribe and press the bell icon. After the mid credit scene, the audience also get to see a post credit scene, which basically shows us the future of MCU. In the Volume 3 post credit scene, Star-Lord is shown having breakfast with his grandfather, who he reunited with during the ending of the film. In the scene they're discussing a neighbor's lawn, which Star-Lord takes care of despite the neighbor having an adult son. As they're talking, Star-Lord's grandfather is reading a newspaper, which features an article about Kevin Bacon, revealing details of his alien abduction, a reference to the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. After the screen cuts to black, text appears stating, the legendary Star-Lord will return. The text appearing at the end of the movie, is not so simple. Because the legendary Star-Lord, name comes from the Marvel Comics, and is in fact, the title of a comic series published 2014-2015 consisting of 12 issues. In the series, Star-Lord sets out on his own solo adventures, indicating what's next for Peter Quill in the MCU is likely to be a spin-off, from the Guardians of the Galaxy franchise. Nothing is yet confirmed by Marvel Studios except that Star-Lord will return and, when he does, he'll have a new name. However this officially confirms, that Chris Pratt will return to the MCU in Phase 5 and beyond, though exactly how his character will be used remains a mystery. In terms of what the ending to Guardians of the Galaxy 3 really means, the film brings a perfect sense of closure. In spite of the threads left open for future appearances, this iteration of the Guardians is truly over. The film perfectly encapsulates each character arc, from Drax and Nebula's raising of the children to Gamora's search for a family and Quill's reconciliation with his relatives, the film's ending truly means the end for the Guardians that have been around since 2014. This is typified perfectly by Rocket's arc, which emotionally grounds the entire film and makes Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 3 one of the MCU's best efforts since Avengers Endgame. So guys that's it for today. If you like this video and have any questions, thoughts, or theories about Volume 3 or its future, please comment, and for more videos don't forget to subscribe. Thank you guys for watching see you soon.